This is a problem from your homework that I was asked to solve in which you have a pool uh, in, in this shape here. So it's three meters deep at the deep end, one meter deep at the shallow end over here, 12 meters across this way, six meters across this way. Water is being pumped into that pool at a rate of one eighth of a cubic meter per minute. When there's one meter, and this is a little hard to read here maybe, but when there's one meter of water at the deep end over here, this one meter, uh, at what rate is the water level rising? Okay, so we are going to need a formula for the volume of water in the pool because uh, the bit of information we're given here, so water being pumped in at a rate of one eighth of a cubic meter per minute, that's your change in volume, right? Cubic meters per minute. So the problem is telling us that dv dt, the change in volume over time, is one eighth of a cubic meter per minute. We wanna find the rate of change for so I'm going to change the one meter to a variable because as the water is pumped in here, uh, the water level is going to be changing. So it's not constant one meter. Uh, so I don't like to use D. I'll call this H for height of the water here. Then the volume of this solid here formed by the water in the pool. Uh, let's see. You could find that volume by finding the area of this triangle and then multiplying by this dimension here, which is gonna be six. So we're assuming that there's enough water in the pool already that it's a meter deep. So the water must be spread all the way across. So we can assume that in, this, in the water here, this dimension is a constant six meters. You're not gonna have the water all piling up on one side of the pool. Uh, this dimension here is going to be in a state of change as the water is pumped in, as will this dimension here. As the water is pumped in, it, you, the water level rises, you're going to have a taller and taller triangle over here. So we need a variable for this dimension here. I'm going to call it W for width. So the volume of water... I'm going to switch to black. This blue is kind of dying. Uh, volume of water will equal the area of that triangle in the front times that width across, which is six. So the volume of water equals area of that triangle, one half base times height. One half, I'll call this the base, which is actually H times W, just base times height, in this case will be H times W times one half. Okay, so that right there is the area of the triangle, so we need to multiply by six. So volume is six times one half, so this is three H W. Now, before we differentiate, it is best to try to write your equation, if you can, in terms of only the, uh, the variables that are directly involved. So volume is directly involved because we have the rate of change for volume. So that's directly involved in this problem. Height is also directly involved because that's what we're trying to determine at what rate is the water level rising. So we're trying to determine dH dt. So H and V are the variables that are directly involved in this problem. W is not directly involved. So we can actually write an expression in terms of H to replace W using similar triangles. So the similar triangles, let me get another color, I'd like to use green. The similar triangles are this one here formed by uh, the pool, that one there, and then this triangle where the, where the water actually is. 
So in this triangle, we have H here, W here. In the green triangle, this dimension here is 12. It's 12 across. And, okay, be careful here. So if it's one meter at the shallow end, we don't want to include this chunk here. That's not, it's not a triangle anymore if we include that. So we want to include, I'm drawing a straight line right to this corner. Well, if it's three meters at the deep end, it's one meter over here, then that would leave two meters, a constant two meters as this dimension of this triangle. You have to have a whole different volume formula. Once your water level gets above two, then now you're filling this rectangular solid, and that has a whole different formula. But the problem concerns when there's one meter of water at the deep end, so we know we're still within this triangular region. So we don't have to worry about what happens up here. Okay, so if we're taking just the triangular region, then that's two meters on this side and 12 meters across. That's a similar triangle with the one filled with water where we called this dimension H, this dimension W. So the ratio of the corresponding sides of similar triangles are equal, meaning 2 over 12 is equal to, if I do 2 over 12, then I should do H over W. Make sure you set it up, set up your proportion where the corresponding sides line up. So short side is 2 versus H, long side is 12 versus W. If we cross multiply in that equation, or if you want to think of it as multiply both sides by a common denominator, which is 12W. If you are taught not to cross multiply, I know sometimes uh, math teachers don't want to encourage that. Then the resulting equation is 2W equals 12H. i am run myself out of room, but here we go. 2W equals 12H. And so we want to replace W with some expression of H. So you can divide both sides by two, solve for W. So W equals six H. Okay, great. So using similar triangles, we figured out that relationship between W and H. So now we can replace W in that volume formula with six H. Okay. And I'm going to have to erase some of what's on the board here. But so overall what happened is we found a formula for volume in terms of H and W. We want to eliminate W from that equation so that the uh, equation only involves V and H, which are the related rates we're trying to compare. So we figured out a relationship between H and W using similar triangles, and then we're able to substitute an expression of H into that volume formula. Okay, I'm erasing the information that the problem gave before I forget what it said. Let's summarize that real quick. So the problem told us that the change in volume is one eighth of a cubic meter per minute. We're asked to find dH dt at the instant that H is one. Now keep in mind, H is a variable. We're, pump, we're, we're constantly pumping water in, so the water level is constantly rising. So we cannot plug in one until after you take the derivative. And our volume formula, why well, I'm still writing in purple, is we started with one half base times height, which is H times W for the triangle we drew, and then uh, times six for the width there. So that gave us three HW, and now we're ready to replace W with 6H. So that the volume is equal to 3 times H times 6H. So volume is equal to 18H squared. It's worth that extra work with the similar triangles up front because otherwise if you differentiate this you'll need the product rule for one thing. And when you apply the product rule, you're going to have a dwdt in there where we don't have information about the rate of change for the width here. So we would have to go back and figure out something about that. So that whole process would take much longer than setting up the similar triangles in advance and figuring out that relationship. Okay. 
So now we can differentiate both sides with respect to time t. So take d dt here, d dt of this side. I can't really squeeze it in, I'm going to anyway, d dt of this side. So you have the derivative of volume, we just put dv dt, equals 18 times the derivative of h squared, so that's 2h times the derivative of the inside, times the rate of change for h. Plug in what we know. So dv dt is 1 8th of a cubic meter per minute. 18 times 2 is 36. h, so now we can plug in. We've already taken the derivative at this point. So now we can plug in. We're looking at the instant that the depth of the water is 1. And then times dh dt, which is what we're trying to solve for. Okay, well then this is actually straightforward, so we just divide by 36 on both sides. And that'll give you your rate of change for h. So this will be, uh, when you divide by 36, you're actually going to multiply in the denominator by 36. Because you can think of that as, if we're dividing by 36 over 1, then dh dt is 1 over 8 times 36. Uh, this will be meters per minute. Which, uh, let's see, so that would be 240 plus 48. So 280, 1 over 288, I believe. You can check my math, but uh, meters per minute. 